Now, last week, we dealt with the civil rights crusade as expressed in the black power and Chicano power movements. It is within this backdrop of protests and demonstrations that the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 was passed. Scholars have noted that the 1965 Immigration and Nationality Act eliminated the national origin quotas that had been enacted in the 1920s. In their place, Congress established two categories of immigrants who would be welcomed. First, family members of U.S. citizens and permanent residents became eligible to immigrate. Family members, including spouses, children, parents, and siblings of U.S. citizens and permanent residents, made up about 80% of immigrants. Uh, this, is, this level has been reduced since 1990. But second, those with special occupational skills, abilities, or training could immigrate. These immigrants with job skills made up the remaining 20% of immigrants. And the 1965 Act established a permeable cap of 290,000 immigrants to the United States annually, with a limit for any single country to 20,000. Now, these limits were permeable, however, because Congress made immediate relatives, such as spouses, minor children, and parents, exempt from these limitations. And over the intervening three decades, the 1965 Act has been amended several times to address three concerns. First, Congress has sought, largely unsuccessfully, to include the admission of refugees in the annual caps on immigration. Second, Congress has endeavored to control undocumented immigration. And finally, Congress has re-examined and reduced the preference for family unification in the 1965 Immigration Act. Let's go to a film clip from a documentary which addresses the effects of the 1965 Immigration and Nationality Act on the Asian and Latino communities. A century ago, most came from Europe. But in recent decades, Changes in immigration law have opened the nation's doors to a new wave of immigrants who once again changed the face of America. The 1965 Immigration Act completely transformed the Asian American community and I would argue completely transforms America. Um, it really changes the last important immigration act, which is the 1924 Immigration Act. The 1965 Immigration Act allocates an equal number for every country in the world, 20,000. It allows Asian immigrants to come in on the same basis as any other country in the world. So now they constitute about 4% of the American population, 10 to 12 million. The 1965 Act said that family reunification was one of the top preferences. So if you had relatives in China, you could sponsor them under the 1965 Act. Now, my mother immigrated in 41, 1941, before this happened. But one of the promises that she made when she left China to, to come to this country um, was that she would find a way to bring her two brothers from China uh, to the United States once she got here. So after the 1965 Act passed, my mother immediately began going to classes and trying to learn English and get ready for passing the citizenship tests so that she can become a U.S. citizen. So in 1972, she's able to send her brother from Hong Kong, sponsor him to come to the United States. And he brought his wife, and his wife had children here. And then later, when he became a citizen, he was able to send for the other brother from China after 1979, when that became possible. The Immigration Act of 1965 also propelled a dramatic rise in Latino immigration, increasing ethnic diversity in the society as a whole and within the immigrant communities themselves. You cannot assume now that if you see an individual that is of Latin American background, that that individual is Mexican. Or you cannot assume that that individual is Puerto Rican. So we need a new um, term, and many people are, are turning to the term Latino. When you have people, for example, from Guatemala and El Salvador settling down in communities that are predominantly Mexican, you start talking about a blending of cultures and uh, a differentiation of Latino culture. Traditionally, immigrants have migrated to the major population centers where they joined large, established immigrant communities. But in recent years, many smaller towns and less populous states 
have also been transformed by immigration. In the early 90s, IBP meatpacking came to the community. And with that, our community grew from 5,000 people to 10,000 people in just a few short months. And with that came a lot of diversity. We're in the heart of Nebraska, we aren't in a big city, so very rarely did you see different uh, cultures or different ethnic groups. And with the influx, we've had the opportunity to realize a lot of the different cultures from all over the world. And for me, I think it's a very, very positive step. We were the first ones to move in maybe a month after it opened, we moved to Lexington here, and that was uh, in 1991. It's changed a whole lot because when we first got here, there weren't many Hispanic people. It kind of stood out from everybody else out of the crowd. As more and more it just started growing and we've seen more type of our people come here, and we relaxed and we liked the town afterwards because it was really quiet. Nice place to grow. There were some language barriers and it made it a little more difficult to realize what each other expected in the community. And so that was probably the biggest hurdle that we had to face. We have a lot of ESL classes teaching them the English, but it's also given our children the opportunity to learn Spanish. And I think the way the world is changing, the uh, North American continent is changing, people that are bilingual are going to be the ones that are going to be at the head of the line. How about that? Bilingual, head of the line.